with Rock and Manooch on Fox Sports 910. All right, Scott Spreitzer joined us normally on Fridays. We got him on a Thursday, and we're going to start with one of his favorite teams, and that's Nebraska and Illinois. They'll go at it tomorrow night in Lincoln, a big game. By the way, Arena Sports Grill, where we'll be on Monday night. They are the home of Huskers in Arizona, so you want to watch the game tomorrow night and uh, take advantage of the fish fry on Friday night there, too. But Nebraska already 3-0 straight up against the spread as a home favorite this season. But this may not be a great spot for them, but uh, we'll see what Scott thinks. So, Scott, you love the Huskers. Do you touch games uh, when it comes to your team? <laughs> yeah, I do. I've bet against them quite a bit over the past five years when I Scott Frost was there. Guess, but, so. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a situation where this line – it opened nine this week, and it was actually nine, nine and a half before last week's games were played. Uh, so no significant injuries for the Huskers. They do have one starting offensive lineman who's been suspended uh, indefinitely, but the person filling in for him has had plenty of starts in his career in college. So I'm a little, bit, a little surprised that it dropped down to seven and a half. There are books that have started to bring it back up to eight. And, of course, they beat Illinois last year 20 to seven. And Nebraska did that without an offense and with a human turnover at quarterback. Well, they don't have to worry about that this year so far. Um, Illinois, when I look at this team, they were outgained on the ground by Kansas, 186 to 79. They gained less than three yards per carry. They gave up about five and a half yards per carry. And then last week against Central Michigan, it's 13 to six at the half. Central Michigan ran for 142 yards, four and a half yards per carry. Kind of fortunate wins. Well, the first game against Kansas was a fortunate win uh, because of the turnovers by Jalen Daniels. But as far as Central Michigan, yeah, they should have won that game over the chips. But if you remove all the luck factor, you're talking about a 20 to 13 type of win. So they've looked so so in their wins while Nebraska's been impressive in all three. And a five star quarterback, Dylan Rayola, is just making this team a different level than what it was a year ago. So I think Nebraska is going to find a way to both win and cover this number. I just think Illinois is about the same, but with better receivers than last year. And I think Nebraska obviously has made leaps and bounds over last year. All right, Scott, you got USC. Uh, last time I looked, it was minus five or five and a half at Michigan. Uh, the big house got a new starting quarterback. How much is that going to affect the line or has it affected the line this weekend? Yeah, it's basically been going back and forth between five and a half and six. Got to tell you guys right now that if they would have stuck with Davis Warren, USC would have been one of my top plays so far this season, but they've made the change, as you mentioned, uh, to Alex Orgy, which means you're going to see a whole lot of running and try to play stout defense. You know, the team has that quarterback problem. Even Orgy, if he has to pass, he's three for six for 15 yards. But this changes the look of the Michigan offense, and so it's a mystery right now as to how well they're going to do or how poorly they're going to play on offense. And then you got Miller Moss exciting electric whatever adjective you wish to call it for usc it's worrisome for michigan that as good as their defense is and as talented they're getting no pressure on opposing quarterbacks right now no pass rush so far this season they're struggling to stop opponents on third down i lean usc guys but it's gone from a definite big play to an opinion mainly because of that mystery at quarterback and what this team's going to do offensively i think we're going to see a whole lot of running and some option football thrown in the mix. I think this is a great game for in-game betting because if Alex Orgy can't get it going for this offense, I think USC pulls away and wins by double digits. Scott Spritzer is our guest on the right Toyota guest line. All right, now this one is kind of unique, Scott, and that is Utah, Oklahoma State. There was a line early, and then the line shifted. Explain to everybody where the line was and now where it is right now. This has been all over the place, guys. It really has. It's funny because you had Utah at one point laying two points. That was last week before the Cam Rising hand injury. Uh, they were moved to a two-point dog when he got hurt. Yesterday, they were back to a two-point favorite. Now they're back to a two-point dog. I mean, it's just been bouncing all over the place. You know, Rising, believe it or not, as good as he's been when he's been healthy, just five and four straight up as a starter on the road in his collegiate career. And if you throw out that game against outman to Southern Utah, then you see Utah's won both games, but the offense has been so-so. They've failed to cover both games. You know, Micah Bernard has been tearing it up on the ground. We do know that. Solid run blocking offensive line. And Oklahoma State's been bad on defense. They've allowed about four and a half yards per carry and 157 rushing yards per game. So I think Utah, if they can have a healthy rising out there and a threat 
to be able to pass the football, then they'll be able to move the ball on the ground. Not crazy about the Oak State defense. I want to see Ollie Gordon start to get more carries. I mean, this might be the best running back in college, yet he's 61 carries for 188 yards the last two weeks. They are 12-0, and by the way, when they rush for a touchdown. I'm going to lean Oklahoma State. Like I mentioned, rising, just a game over 500 on the road. Utah, six big game true road trips the last two years. They're one and five in those games. So Oak State, now they're minus the points again. So there you go. Scott Spritzer joining us here. Rock of Manuch with Jimmy B. Normally on Friday. He's got him on a Thursday today because he, he's got Nebraska uh, pregame tomorrow. He's got to get so all he's over. He's got to get ready. Oh, for that. yeah, he does. But, uh, <laughs> let, let's talk about the Sun Devils, Red Raiders. They're meeting for the first time since 2017. Uh, Red Raiders are a three-point home favorite, at least uh, is what I see now, or three and a half, and a total of 16 and a half. Uh, what's going to happen this time around? Guys, I decided that if the total was under 60, I was going to play the over. The total is 59, so you know where I'm going here. Uh, I do believe Tech will be able to slice and dice the Arizona State secondary. They seem willing to get out of the way of opposing receivers at times. Uh, they got out game by 53 yards last week in a win over Texas State, but that was a nice win. The Bobcats are a good football team. They may win that conference. Uh, but the other wins were unimpressive. Miss State, we talked about it here a couple of weeks ago, and like ASU in that game, they got the job done. Miss State's bad. Wyoming misses Craig Bowl in a very big way. Texas Tech finally put it together last week. They were great on the ground and through the air, 66 points, nearly 600 yards. Here's the kicker, though. They've allowed 109 points in three games, 108th against the run, 118th against the pass, 123rd in total defense. So it's under 60. I like the over in this one. All right, Scott, the last one. The Lions are coming into town to invade State Farm Stadium. Lions and Cardinals, last time I looked, it was Detroit minus three. But it's interesting, the over-under, 51 and a half. Do you see a high-scoring game? Do you see Detroit finally getting off the schneid, lighting up that offense like we saw at the end of the year last year? Yeah, I, I would lean towards the over in this one. And by the way, Kyler Murray, I've always been a fan of his. And man, has he looked great this year. I mean, last week was fantastic. Uh, but I think this is his toughest test to date. I mean, Detroit's defensive line, you know, they've been terrific putting pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Seven sacks in two games. I believe it was five last week. They're also fourth against the run. And Arizona has been run first. 355 yards, five and a half yards per pop. They've run the ball 65 times. They've thrown it 52 times. But they faced a badly banged up three team last week in a Buffalo defense in week one that also gave up a lot of yardage to Miami on the ground. And the Dolphins were so generic last week, but yet they were able to run the football without the threat of a passing game. Uh, offensively, I look at this Lions team so good up front on the offensive line. They're getting four and a half yards per carry out of Montgomery, 5.2 per carry out of Joshua Gibbs. And they crushed Tampa Bay statistically. 463 yards to 216. They averaged over five and a half yards per play, but you got a turnover at the Tampa six, a turnover at the Tampa 26, and then Dan Campbell making that boneheaded move at the end of the first half that cost him a field goal. One thing about Detroit, they're seven and oh straight up and against the spread following the two game homestand. They've also covered five in a row off at least one loss, and they won those five games by an average of 30 to 17. I like Detroit to bounce back here and get the win. Scott. As always, buddy, thanks for uh, fitness in this week, and we'll Two. talk to you next week. Hey, thanks for moving the show, guys. Good luck. You got it. Scott Sprites for joining us. Follow him on Twitter at Scott Wins, part of DocSports.com. He's been with us for over 15 years, normally on Fridays. So uh, who are we going to get to replace him? Well, we got, a, we got a pretty big hitter that's going to replace him at that 230 spot. Who's that? Yeah, Kevin Rowe. The council. You moved him to 230. Oh, he gets prime time. He, he's, he's wanting that. So what are you going to do at uh, 215? Well, at 2 o'clock, we got Eric Moses, the CEO and president. 215 will be open. We'll, we'll, we'll break it down. We'll break this cardinal Lion game down. Get that going on. We'll get it going on going on at 215 tomorrow, Rock. Wow. Want me to call in and add yeah. some levity? Yeah. <laughs> we, we, need, we need a punching bag. Yeah. We got we got, we got got a lot going on tomorrow, Rock. <laughs> Just sit there. We'll, we'll break it all down. Some other notes, some things that are trending when it comes to the world of gambling. The Buckeyes, who have bowl, uh, who have uh, Marshall one. this week, yep, they have won 87 consecutive games straight up as the favorite of 20 points or more. Wow! Since 2016, they're 35 and 0 straight up. Uh, that's just gigantic. And how about this? Hawk over, as in Iowa Hawks. Week one, Iowa over. Week two. 
Iowa over. Week three, Iowa over. They've always been the under. They always for the have. last like four years. They found an offense. And now they are no. the over. No, they <laughs> haven't. No, <laughs> they, they haven't. They, they are their defense is stellar. They're actually putting points on the board, Jimmy. Not many. They they played two teams that they that they just buried. It'll be different against Minnesota's defense one, tomorrow. One more. Missouri, 3-0, 7-0 oh, in the country. Or sorry, ranked seventh in the country. Yeah. Huge favorite against Vanderbilt this week. They as a favorite of 17 points or more, they are 53 and 0 straight up. Wow. Since 1990. They are the the, the wow. most quietest under the radar top they 10 are. team. They love it. Yeah. In hey, the nation. Scott Hughes brought to you by our Twin Peaks fantastic tailgating sweepstakes. It's by our friends from Blue Moon and Course Light. Text Peaks to 59925. You can do it every day, just once, and a huge grand prize. A Traeger grill, a Blackstone griddle, a pizza oven. I mean, so much. Go to the website, rockandmanooch.com. You can see all the stuff we're giving away. No purchase necessary. Just text PEAKS to 59925. Standard message and data rates do apply. Coming up, we'll continue talking some college football as it starts tonight.